Everything you've heard about St. Louis, North St. Louis, is here, but on a small scale. We still have prostitution, we have drugs, we have gangs. And seven years ago, I was hired to help a group of uh, people give back to the city and help develop an area up in North St. Louis. And it has some of the poorest housing in St. Louis there. They were called railroad houses. They were built for people to help build the railroad. So they're all in lots that are 20 or 25 feet wide, 100 feet deep. And basically, the people who lived there seven years ago were very poor, uneducated, older blacks. And the homes were in pretty sad shape, most of them. When we first moved over here, the majority of the people over here were senior citizens who had been here a very, very, very long time. And um, they're still here and they're not afraid to go anywhere anymore because not only do we have the policemen moving in the area, but the Union West Florist and Housing Solutions Group has hired uh, security. Went in there and the idea was to get new homes on empty lots, to give grants so people can help rebuild their own homes, to rehab beautiful structures that are saveable, and try to do streetscape lighting. There were some properties that were kind of dilapidated um, and those that they didn't want to put the <clears throat> the monies into to try to rehab, they tore those down and built brand new homes, uh, brick homes that were conducive to the, or were comparable I should say, to the uh, architecture in the community, in the neighborhood. Um, and then those places that could be rehabbed you did a beautiful job on that, so if you go from here back west, it's very, very, very nice. When we do a comparative market analysis on what properties or like properties are selling for, we find that our homes, this house in particular, which happens to be larger than another home that the same builder is building in a different subdivision, is 200 square feet larger. It's bricked on three sides where the other home is bricked on one side in the front. This is four bedrooms where that house is only three bedrooms and this one runs $112,000 cheaper. Now you do the math. And in order to entice the policeman or the fireman to come in, they offer them incentives to come and move into the area, which means that they can get that house built from the ground for $20,000 less than anybody else where a new home has been built, we literally now have a cop on every block. I think the, the, the most succinct thing I can say about the neighborhood, seven years ago, we couldn't even get policemen to live there if we gave them a house. Now we have like eight or nine. Living in the neighborhood? Yeah, they're living there. And they're like in each different blocks too. It's really cool. It's, it's, they're sort of the eyeballs of the block. The neighborhood is cleaned up tremendously. Uh, the gang violence is down probably maybe about 78 percent. Um, we have a whole lot of new people that have moved into the neighborhood. We get a lot of people that call, people that grew up in the neighborhood that have heard about the things that are happening over here and contact me personally. Taking another look at this graphic, we can see the strategy of the Union West Florissant Group is to make investments in concentrated areas with construction from a single year grouped on adjoining properties in nearby blocks. This strategy enables the neighborhood to see an immediate impact, clusters of complete redevelopment, versus the haphazard individual efforts that made Old Norse redevelopment take decades to gain traction. However, the speed of the redevelopment effort gave little emphasis to communicating with members of the neighborhood about the intentions of the development or the needs of the community. All too often, well-intentioned outsiders kind of show up in places and say, we're here to help and kind of know what's wrong and here are our programs, come get them. Since the donor group prefers to remain sort of behind the scenes, we had an incredible problem. <laughs> bunch of white guys from Ladu are going to come up to a poor neighborhood in North St. Louis and tell them what to do, and not even tell us who they are. That's an ongoing balance between, you know, you want to do because you see the need and you think you may have the resources or the skills to get it done, but if the community is not there with you, um, over time, you know, again, the, the, the effort will fail because the community hasn't bought in and doesn't own it. 
and won't keep it moving forward at such point in time when you're no longer there driving the resources day in and day out as you may be in the beginning phase. Inadvertently allow the residents of the community to become passive recipients of your work versus um, active partners in helping making the community better. Four months ago, the board, with some of the very intelligent people on it, said, are we doing the right thing? Are we done? Are we just starting? What's going on? Do we do more? We're running out of grass. In other words, most of the lots are filled now. It became apparent to those involved in the redevelopment efforts of both neighborhoods that they needed to change their strategies. They needed to do more. In West Florissant, their efforts basically came to a standstill because they had no formal relationship with members of the community, which in turn weakened the political support necessary to do more redevelopment. As we speak, the group is helping form a neighborhood association to direct their future steps to better serve the community. In Old North St. Louis, they've started to follow West Florissant's effective use of targeted investment by private developers and nonprofits. As Chris Kramer of Beyond Housing told me, there's no one right way to do this work. But to be more accurate, it turns out that it takes several, working in conjunction to turn redevelopment efforts into a true revitalization. The organization, the Old North St. Louis Restoration Group, really came into its own fully in the mid-90s. And ever since then, the, the neighborhood led by the the restoration group has just been on a roll. <laughs> I mean, we're just we're just kicking and screaming, you know. Hey, 